Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's really good to have you here. We're going to be talking to quite an unusual combination today. My guests are David Damien, who is an Egyptian, and Asher Entrater, who is a Jew. And they are both together on the Council of Leadership of Watchmen for the Nations. And I thought we'd talk to you about the dynamics of their relationship and friendship, and the fact that the Lord in John 17 talks about the one new man. And when I look at these two gentlemen, I think so often of that and how unusual it is. And if God can bring them as friends together, he can bring us all together. Welcome both of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello. And I'm going, to, hi, I'm going to speak to you. Let's start with you, Asha. How on earth would you have met up with David Damien, who is as Egyptian a gentleman as I've ever known? <laughs> well, uh, I would say one word about uh, generally uh, meeting Arabs in, in all of the, our Middle Eastern cousins, as we say. It, I went all the way back, uh, actually in 1979, was uh, I was invited to a reconciliation conference. And uh, I thought it was mostly reconciliation between whites and blacks. And they asked me to sit on the stage, I assumed as kind of the token Jew. And I noticed that they had a, uh, an Arab pastor there, uh, Suhel Ramadan, who was from uh, Nazareth, who's gone on to be with the Lord. And I thought, well, that's funny. What would they be having an Arab doing on the stage here with us? And then all of a sudden I realized that after they were going to do black and white reconciliation, they were going to do Arab and Jew reconciliation. So I was a little surprised. And I said, wait a minute, it's okay for blacks and whites to be uh, reconciled, but not Arabs and Jews. I mean, read the Bible. We're the good guys. They're the bad guys. This doesn't work. So anyway, sitting on the stage there that day, my heart changed. And all these years uh, for us as Jewish believers, uh, and particularly here in Israel, uh, there are actually very good relationships between us, between Jews, uh, Messianic Jews and Arab Christians. We've been through some very difficult times, particularly during the Intifadas with uh, Israeli Messianic Jews and Palestinian uh, Christian Arabs. Uh, but we've walked through that and we love one another. Uh, particularly with David, I will just say one thing is that uh, I... For he, for him and me together, we've both been praying separately for unity in the body, as John, as uh, Yeshua prayed in John 17. And uh, when I got to know him, I saw such a beautiful expression of, of oneness that he was gathering people around for a vision of the global family with the presence of the Holy Spirit and relationships as a family. And uh, I just felt drawn to it. And I thought, well, this is the best expression of John 17 that I've ever seen. And I thought the fact that it was being led by an Egyptian was, was not uh, repulsive to me, exactly the opposite, it was perfect. I thought, wow, this is, this is just the uh, type of spiritual family I wanna be involved in. And I think from there, David and I just learned to really trust one another and to love one another and to give, and to give up agendas, give up egos, give up ministry for sure, even give up uh, any kind of identity and just come in and, and share our hearts together. And it's been a, kind of a honeymoon all this time. Well, what is always wonderful is that you don't, didn't have to give up your food cultures. They're very similar. When I've been to both of those nations, I've discovered they're very similar. So that's fortunate, I would think. I think many a, many a mud pie has been thrown or a cream pie has been thrown <laughs> at one another when you haven't enjoyed the same food. The funny thing is, is that uh, this is going a little far astray, but you know, the Jewish people have been in exile for most of the past 2000 years. So if we come back to Israel as our homeland, what native culture do we have? All of our culture really is Arab culture. You say our food is similar. It's not similar. It's, it's Arab food. <laughs> We've come back to eat the same food. So it's uh, really, we're, it's, actually it's part of that dynamic of us 
of our people coming back. And in a, in a strange way, um, there's really a deep love between Arabs and Jews. Arabs and Jews love to be with one another. We're having to overcome a lot of historical animosity and so on. But when it comes to Middle Eastern culture and food and, and rhythm, I mean, we just really, there's, there's actually a deep love under the surface. You have, to get to, you have to get to it, but it's there. David, when you began the whole process of Watchmen for the Nations or you together with um, Pastor Bob Birch and all of those days gone by, did you think that you would get to this place? I don't know whether this was even on your, your horizon. Hi, Asher, it's uh, so good to hear uh, nice to your you. heart and uh, your expression. And thank you, Lauren, for putting this together. Uh, actually, uh, I, I feel in all my journey, I feel I'm tricked by God. I always think this way. I never thought I would have any vision be besides the, uh, the Arab people and Egypt. Never ever thought that I had a heart for the nations, but never thought. When it comes to the Jewish people, I, I have a lot of disadvantages. We don't have Jewish people living with us in Egypt growing up. We kicked them out all uh, during the uh, revolution. So there is no Jews. I was not in touch with Jewish people. Our teaching was so negative. Uh, they rejected God, it's finished. And also the whole war war that uh, uh, we have experienced in, in, our, in my lifetime different wars with Israel. So Israel is our enemy. And uh, all this has kind of blinded my eyes to the Jewish people. So I would have accepted uh, God stretching my heart for the nations, but for Israel, it was another whole different experience. So I had, I had to go through a lot of transformation of dealing with my heart to the point that I really discovered that I had a deep uh, 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 hatred in my heart for the Jewish people. And I discovered that when people talked about their nations, the Philippines or, or Brazil, I'm celebrating them. But when people talk about Israel and God visiting Israel, I, felt, I don't want that. I, don't, I really didn't want them to be blessed. I felt in my heart and it bothered me and troubled me. So the Lord took me on a personal journey and my journey with Asher was very unique because I remember uh, when the Lord changed my heart, it was a revelation. It was not a natural thing. It was an encounter with God. So I'm longing now to meet with the Messianic family and walk with them. And uh, in my heart, I wanted to enter into this covenant. And I remember the first time I met Asher, uh, someone took me to revive Israel in uh, uh, just outside of Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, the first time we talked, and uh, we talked about the covenant, and Asher said to me, I wrote a book about covenant. And he gave me the book, and I thought, isn't that interesting that we have the same heart we, we never met before? And then uh, we uh, 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 started our, our walk together, and at this time, I was trying to figure Asher out because Asher is a, a very intense man and I'm a very intense man. I am intense in my passion for relationships with people and Asher is intense in his relationship with the Lord. And I loved that. And I was trying to get closer to his heart. And it happened in, uh, in one of the gatherings in Munich uh, in 2015. Uh, this gathering was the first time that allowed me to see how humble Asher is and how uh, uh, dedicated he is to the body. And uh, I walked with the Messianic people before and I loved them, but that kind of level, kind of, I mean, maybe, maybe there is destiny too. I discovered that the Lord knit our hearts in a way that was uh, deeper than my mind could understand or could grasp. I gave him my- hey, but, you know. I David, let me interrupt you for a second here. I just remember yeah. that when we were in Munich together, um, I realized that you it, it was set up to be in the same stadium where the Israeli yeah. athletes were killed. And I remember I went to you and I said, yeah. David, what are you doing? How can, this is so insensitive. Don't you realize this is the same place where the Israeli 
athletes were killed. And you, and you said, and you totally surprised me, you said, that's exactly why we're doing it here. We're coming back on purpose in a heart of love and repentance. And I said, whoa, this is a whole different ballgame going on here. That's you know, true, Go ahead, Lauren. David, I just wanted to interject and say to you that in the, the way that God sets these sort of things up, with that whole Munich thing, did you were you aware of that at that time? Uh, that in that stadium? No, no. We, we, that was the only uh, we wanted this arena, but that was the only arena that was open for us because 2015 was the 70 years for the uh, Second World War, and every arena was booked. We it was very hard, but when we started walking in in, the, in this arena. The, the in, intense security that the people, they started, the German uh, 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 people, there was intense security. And I said, we have never been in that kind of a security before. And uh, they told me, it's because you're meeting in this arena and the history of this arena between the Arabs and the Jews. Suddenly I realized it was a setup from the Lord that to bring the Jewish family and the Arab family redeemed by the Lord to restore what the enemy has done years ago. And that brought brought us to the brought me to the to the realization we are bigger than just a gathering that we have done. The Lord is going into the history and he knew what he was doing. So it, it was a, a, a time when really we felt we are on a divine moment of a restoration, more than Asher and myself, more than the group that was there. In, uh, uh, in Munich uh, from the Messianic family and the Egyptian and the Arab family. And actually we had a lot of Egyptians and a lot of Arabs there. But more than that, the Lord is going into the history to heal the rift and the wound and the wall and the betrayal that was done in this arena at this time. Gentlemen, I just want to say that I think that we really need to try and continue with this conversation and, and at another time now, I'm thinking about the depth of the reconciliation. I don't want it to be rushed or to gloss over it now. So I'm going to ask both of you to come back and we're going to go deeper into this friendship, which I think what I'm seeing very often is that God is leading with the friendship and then there's the surprise package and then that deepens the friendship perhaps even a little bit more. But what it seems to add is this one new man of the people of the outside. And that's what I want to talk to you about next time. And so I'm asking you to, oh, I'm going to say to you, we're coming back again at another time to do this. And I want to say to all of you, we're going to continue this. This is just, we're getting into the meat of this. Thank you for joining me and thank you for joining my two guests and we'll see you next time.